Hey everybody, welcome to Storm Talk. Way 3 News Meteorologist Brian Good here on this Friday. Happy Friday to you. By the way, I will be out uh, for next week, so uh, there will be no uh, blog updates. I'll be updating social media when I can, uh, but I will not be out, and or I will be out until after Thunder. So, uh, by the way, we will be at the Bats game on Thunder Day. Uh, me, myself, Kevin Harnett, Ryan Hoax. If you get a chance, come out to the Bats game for Thunder. We'll be out there about 1 o'clock in the afternoon on the, that Saturday and uh, come out and say hi to us. Uh, we'd love to see you. All right, as far as uh, storm talk today, obviously uh, no major systems in the short term. The weather is still dominated by mainly high pressure. Notice the cumulus clouds trying to pop up across uh, central areas of Kentucky. Cannot roll out an isolated shower that could develop underneath some of these clouds later on this afternoon. It's still a possibility, all right? It's not going to be a zero chance, but it's not going to be a washout either. Uh, 73 now, 70 in Campbellsville, 70 into E-Town. Where, uh, it's all attached to that area of low pressure it has been hovering around portions of Arkansas as of late, and it should begin to fade out completely in the coming days. But it's got a little bit of a moisture feed that sends right in Kentucky, and that's the reason why I've got to keep that chance in there. Here's future cast. It shows that chance for, again, a pop-up or two, uh, some showers this afternoon, uh, developing in that flow that heads uh, backwards, basically, southwest to, to northwest. And then that'll fade away at sunset. Tonight we drop down to around 50 again for a low, and then tomorrow... Back in the 70s, lots of lots and lots of blue sky for Saturday. Lots of blue sky on Sunday and temperatures again. This model goes out to about 1 o'clock, but we're going to be already probably in the 70s by 1 o'clock. I think the model is underestimating that south flow by that point in time. So then we get into next Tuesday, by the way. The front for Tuesday looks even weaker on the midday data. So let's skip right ahead to what's going to happen for Thunder over Louisville. This is what everybody wants to know. Still seeing an area of low pressure, fairly broad. We do have a couple fronts in the Great Lakes, but this area of low pressure with a blocking pattern is trying to hint that this thing is going to be very broad, very slow, sluggish, which you would expect any blocking setup, scattering of showers and thunderstorms. The model is kind of throwing them all over the place and very well could impact now thunder with that slower movement. Let me show you the GFS data first. Confidence meter on this is going to go up more than likely. Here's the, our maps from Weather Bell. Big thanks to them for the, the maps here. You can see on Saturday... Saturday afternoon, GFS, this is the high-res GFS, showing a few pop-up showers and thunderstorms. Very random. It, it may not be exactly what is shown here. It's so far out, it's just kind of picking out uh, potential anyway. Um, now this, uh, <laughs> sorry about this, another map snuck in there that I didn't want to show. There we go. Uh, always happens to me. Temperatures on thunder. GFS is showing around 80 to 82 upper 80s to near 90 in some cases in Missouri and in the 90s, mid 90s in some areas of the Carolinas into Florida and Georgia. Wow. A lot of heat. The reason why it's not showing mid to upper 80s here is because it's betting on the idea of more cloud cover and maybe a few shower thunderstorms. But if we were to see sunshine, we would easily be in the mid 80s. You combine that with, I know it's hard to read this, but combine that with dew points in the mid to upper 60s, we've got a heat index in the upper 80s to around 90 degrees crazy to talk about that in April, but that looks to be the case. Now, as far as winds go, it is showing mainly a southwest or south wind um, as we do the afternoon and evening. We'll watch that. That could impact uh, the smoke, of course, blowing it into Indiana for the fireworks, and maybe a little gusty at times for the air show. We'll see. But more importantly for the air show, we're expecting cumulus clouds, which they can fly uh, in a kind of a setup, but we don't want overcast to really limit the ceiling for the air show. So we'll have to watch that. Um, because if we have any rain Saturday morning, that's always a threat. You have a low ceiling early in the day, and hopefully we can break the clouds up to raise the ceiling up so the planes can have enough room to do their stunts. So we'll monitor how Saturday's going to go as we get closer. Here's the Canadian just came in. Similar idea, pop up of showers and thunderstorms. Uh, this is the wind field showing mainly winds out of the west uh, as we do have that little bit of a front that kind of sags in, enhancing some of that rainfall in some cases, but a little gusty wind out of the west, uh, but it is showing temperatures, by the way, well into the 80s. So at this point, the trends are there for us to at least get into the 80s for highs for the air show. Thunderstorm chance has gone up slightly because the more humid atmosphere, we've got to put that in and we've got to raise it. And then for the fireworks, uh, we may see a lot of the activity fade away as far as rain, but it may remain quite humid and temperatures in the mid 70s. Comments meter right now, five on a scale of one to 10. We'll monitor this, but based on the blocking pattern and what usually happens in slow systems, very sluggish, this idea is looking to me to be more and more of a likely scenario. We'll watch it, of course, and keep you updated day by day. We'll have more today beginning at 5.